know my down here in New York night's perfume. I have to only put a little bit on because uh, he will get sick. And if you think about perfume, well, gee, what about all the other chemicals? Hairspray, um, again, with aerosols, off. I'm at the point now, if anybody says you want some off, no, no, fine. Thank you. I don't want those chemicals on my body. And there's those coils you can get at the dollar store. Uh, Dollar Tree and other stores, but the Dollar Tree is only a dollar. That, um, I think it has some citronella in it, and you burn it, and that's something else that will keep the insects away. So we can choose what kind of, kind of chemicals we want to ingest. And we can also choose to make our own homemade insect, bug sprays, weed killers. Uh, my dad is a commercial farmer, and uh, it's sad because when it's time to spray the grapes, you don't want to be out there. So grapes are the number one fruit. I've been doing research on that in our country. They have the most uh, pesticide. So it would behoove you if you do not get organic grapes. If you get commercial grapes, and if you get commercial GMO grapes, wash them very, very thoroughly because there are chemicals on the skin of the grapes. Um, another thing that we had talked about in prior classes, uh, this young, young lady asked me, um, what do I do about splinters? And anytime somebody has a question, I love it because I love to do research. And if I don't know the answer, I will find out. And one of the coolest things I found out was baking soda, which is cheap and which we all have in our pantries and our medicine cabinets, mixed with equal parts of water, you make a little poultice of baking soda, you put it on the you know, affected area where you have the um, splinter and you um, put the paste on there and you let it rest overnight with a band-aid over it. In the morning you take the band-aid off and the uh, poultice will have pulled it out of your skin. So that's a safe way of getting it out as opposed to nail clippers that you dip in hot water or burn with uh, you know, a match to sanitize it or a needle which you poke, you know, because sometimes those splinters can hurt. And there's also an aromatic remedy that you will find in your pamphlet on how to get rid of splinters. Insect bites, that's very interesting. Some people say it's good to use meat tenderizer. Um, there are other remedies too, and you'll find that in your pamphlet. Um, out of all the different uh, insect repellents, I got excited when uh, we found this nice one. And then Sarah, I can't remember which one you used from the email because I looked at it both. In the packet, it's right on the first page, I think. Yes. Okay. So actually, it's the one to 20. Okay. This should have said one to 30. But so you want to tell us how they yeah. came out? So um, on the first page, it talks about making your own insect repellent. I found we found a lot of different kind of slightly, slightly varied. Um, versions of the same thing, and um, the source that I liked said um, for maybe like a fourth to a third of a cup liquid, whether it's water, witch hazel, oil, whatever you want to use, um, it said use up to maybe 30 drops of essential oil, but it also said um, if you can get by using less, that's fine, um, if, you know, I think the woman for some reason said less is more, so it's concentrated. Sure. That's true, right? Exactly. And so, the potency is enough that you don't need to add too much. Right. Um, so the recipe on here says 30 drops of essential oil for a third of a cup. But if you read her notes above it, um, it would be kind of like 1 to 30. Um, you might start with a little bit less. Also because essential oils, they're not the cheapest thing. I think maybe a bottle might cost about like $6 to $10, depending on what you're purchasing. Um, so if you can get by using less and you notice that it works, to so just use five drops of citronella in a third of a cup of water instead of a third of a cup of witch hazel, um, use less. There's no need to use 30 on that. Um, I used about, so the bottles will hand out, um, I would say to a, maybe a fourth or a third of a cup, I probably use like 15 drops. So you can see how that works for you. If you find you need something stronger, you can add a little bit more. But, it smells pretty, actually, while we were putting it together today, Mike was helping me, um, he's filming, 
And people kept walking by and saying, oh my god, what is that smell? And some people like the smell, and some people um, hopefully reacted like the mosquitoes and said, that's the worst smell I've ever smelled, the citronella. So, wow. So it was very strong when we were putting it together. My face actually turned red. <laughs> okay, that, that, maybe that goes hand in hand with being yeah. a well-ventilated area. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. which, is, which is important. Yeah. But um, I think Sarah and Mike and everyone else here at the Chicago County Movement Ministry helped put together this beautiful workshop. And um, normally I'm a little bit more hands-on, but I was pressed for time this month. But one thing that I'm not pressed for is the love that I have for using natural products and doing research for ways that we can help prevent chemical uh, imbalances that occur due to chemicals. Um, and also preventing harm to the environment, to animals, and to one another. Because if you're educated, and if you know that something that, that contains all these toxic, toxic chemicals are good, then don't buy it. Don't use it. Don't even offer it to somebody. Because what you're doing is you're adding to the problem a chemical disease, which becomes disease. And some of these chemicals reach into our system, and sometimes we don't see the damage until it's too late or we see the gradual damage over time. So here I go. I'm just going to show you the one-to-one -one equal parts of water and vinegar natural um, wheat filler. This is something so simple that you can do at home. Yeah, it is vinegar. I was expecting Okay, so this is just one-to-one -one vinegar and water. And this is something you can do easily at home. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And you can use it one to one. One to one. So I use one cup of, of each. Or you can use two cups of each. The ratio of one to one. So this, see? One to one. Can you see? <laughs> so that really pretty much sums it up. Because I just wanted to do the bug spray. One, one example of a nice natural uh, bug repellent that you could have. That you can make. That you don't have to use chemicals that are going to harm the environment, other people, or animals. And then another weed killer that you can do on your own at home that's very cost effective and it's not going to cause extra damage to the environment, yourself, or other people, or animals. And then at your own leisure, look at these wonderful pamphlets. We have the second pamphlet, Natural Pest Control 101. And again, there are links to different web pages. And um, there's also going to be some list of beneficial bugs that you want to keep and encourage uh, returning to your garden, as opposed to the pests that you don't want that would harm your crops. And uh, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, this is all pretty much wonderfully put together. There's all kinds of information for you to check out on your own. But um, if you get a chance to buy this book, Amazon.com sells it, I think 12 bucks. Um, this has been a wonderful source for me, and I'm still reading up and learning a lot. So that way, when I have time to garden next year, uh, one thing that I want you to keep note of is when Sarah showed us the garden, those of you that came to the open house, they had, was it marigolds? In, in with the vegetables, mm -hmm. there are certain flowers that you would like to intermix with your vegetables because they will keep the bugs away. One of them is marigolds, another one is nasturtium. And nasturtium grows like vines, they're crazy. And it's so beautiful and it's also edible. I've made cheesecakes and decorated them with nasturtium and eaten them. I've had nasturtium in my salads. So maybe next spring, I'll lead a workshop on edible flowers. And I will show you how to sugar flowers so we can decorate with cakes, cupcakes, cookies, and whatnot. Um, and uh, just how to work with the bounty of nature that's around us in a helpful, uh, conscious, environmental way. Yes? How about the uh, hair clippers for rabbits? Oh, that's one thing that'll keep deer away. Oh, deer? Okay. Yes. If you have human hair, yes. that'll keep deer away from your crops. And I also believe rabbits. And I think you might find that information in some of the, uh, the pamphlet on the websites.